Great. Hey, thanks so much, Jack. It's a pleasure to be here. And I'm um, really gratified that uh, 68 uh, of you so far are, are choosing to spend your uh, uh, part of your Friday uh, with us. And we're, we're grateful for your capital. We're grateful for your time. Um, let me start off with a, a new poll, um, which is, you know, as we look at the current market dynamics, which includes the twin disruptions right now of COVID and a national presidential election, are you planning to allocate less, the same, or more capital to venture investments, whether that, whether that means directly into startup companies or indirectly through funds such as ourselves um, in 2021 uh, versus uh, this, uh, this year? Uh, uh, I'll uh, please uh, go ahead and, and submit those results. And in a couple of minutes, I'll come back and, um, and see what, uh, what the consensus was. Jack and Dixon and I founded Impact Venture Capital in 2016 to drive investments into early stage applied AI startups in Silicon Valley and elsewhere. And what I'd like to do is take just a few minutes to review why the data indicates to me that this is a particularly promising year to deploy capital into this asset class. I would also like to describe the critical role corporations are playing in the growth of the venture ecosystem. Then I want to uh, review our fund one approach and performance and finish with a review of our start to fund two. Going to the next slide. Um, to start, I'd like to look at the broad economic picture and how venture fits with the other broad asset classes that you as investors have elected uh, to, to have access to. And I would start by observing that over the last 30 years, no asset class has had higher returns than early stage venture. Venture overall, uh, it's not even close. Over short horizons, uh, different asset classes tend to be tightly clustered. But as you get to longer horizons, venture overall outperforms and early stage venture outperforms late stage venture um, with the highest performance coming to funds that are both small in size and early in stage. We go to the next slide. I want to look at some more traditional asset classes. The risk return advantage of early stage venture really tends to be more pronounced in a crisis. That's because conventional investments suffer. Let's look at conventional in in investments this year as of close of market yesterday. In the wake of COVID, we've seen that the US stock market is approximately flat. The S&P closed yesterday up 1.5% year to date after being down in March early in the COVID crisis as much as 38%, it's now flat to up. But that hides a more relevant fact, which is that currently over three quarters of stocks are down and only 20% are up. And what we have is a phenomenon where three quarters of stocks are down a little bit and you know about a quarter are up a lot. So the index looks good, but your own mileage may vary as they say. And unless you're invested in the index fund, the odds are that your own portfolio is down. Even more importantly than the ups and downs in S&P is the absolute spike in volatility. If you look at the uh, CBOE VIX measure of volatility year to date, um, that has been spiking um, you know, significantly higher than a normal year. So the S&P uh, hides uh, mixed results among companies, volatility is high. And if we look at other um, markets, if we look at say international equity markets, they're faring worse than domestic um, with the same kind of volatility and the um, VTIAX, which is an index of, of non-US stocks globally is, is still down about 9% year to date. Fixed income yields are essentially zero. The 10 year treasury yield has been below 1% all year, including today. And if you look at even other uh, diversified asset classes like real estate, the IYR uh, real estate index was down 37% at one point and is still down 15% year to date. So, um, you know, other asset classes are looking, uh, are looking troubled uh, is, is what I take out of this. If we go to the next slide, we can see that the risk return advantage of early stage venture tends to be more pronounced in a crisis because, in part because conventional investments suffer. In a crisis, all valuations are impacted, including those in venture. But by the time those early stage startups mature, the crisis has passed and those lower valuations tend to translate into higher multiples. We went back and looked at prior crises. And if you look at the data from 2008, that was a year that gave birth to several prominent startups in the middle of a financial crisis. 
um, it, some of those uh, became unicorns uh, now at what were attractive valuations then, including Uber, Airbnb, Dropbox, Cloudera, and Credit Karma. But if you look at a vintage year, 2008 was the second best year of that decade because the impacted valuations allowed people to invest it at relatively more attractive valuations. And by the time these companies exited 10 years later, meaning in the last year or two, uh, they were seeing very high valuations and very high multiples. Let me take this chance to go back to the poll and ask if you're seeing the same opportunity um, or not. Um, so uh, Aaron, if you can pull up the poll results, um, it looks like uh, it looks like I'm uh, preaching somewhat to the converted, where um, half of you are saying that you'll deploy about the same in 2021 as 2020, and fully uh, two fifths of you are saying that you will deploy more capital into tech companies and venture funds in 2021. Um, so it may be that, uh, that you folks are looking at the same data that I am. I, uh, I find that comforting. I still want to talk to the 8% of you who are, uh, who are looking to decrease your allocation um, uh, to venture as an asset class. Um, if we go to the next slide, this is a more detailed analysis of not just one, but four past crisis uh, uh, periods, which show that the best time to, from an investor standpoint, to allocate to venture as an asset class, especially at an early stage, is one to four quarters after the low point of a crisis. And if we consider the crisis peak to have been late Q1, early Q2 of 2020, then one to four quarters uh, goes from last quarter uh, to two quarters from now as being uh, based on the past optimal times uh, to invest. So the conclusion that we reach is whatever your long-term average allocation is to venture, looking at past crisis indicates that you may want to increase that allocation at the end of 2020 and the beginning of 2021. I'd like to turn now to a review of our approach and our performance in our first fund, fund one. I'm going to the next slide and actually uh, go, going forward two slides. A core part of our identity at Impact VC is our strong collaboration with corporate venture arms. As Jack mentioned, I used to manage Oracle's corporate venture portfolio and Jack uh, was engaged to assist in 2012. He's now uh, a partner of mine. When we with Dixon formed Impact in 2016, fewer than one in 10 venture deals included a corporate investor. Last year, more than four in 10 venture deals had a corporate investor. And this year, more than half of venture deals had a corporate investor. Um, that represents the, the really strong growth of corporate as a player in the venture ecosystem. It doesn't change the fact that often corporates and independent VCs have different objectives. And here at Impact VC, we've sat on both sides of that table and we're convinced that we see a stronger quality and quantity of deal flow through the partnerships that we maintain with major corporates. We have now co-invested with several corporates, uh, including SK Hynix, Yamaha, Baidu Ventures, Goldman, Bank of America, Data Logic, and others. Moving to the next slide, note that 25 years ago, the internet began as a handful of tech companies and then evolved into a tool required by all companies in order to remain competitive. We are witnessing and investing in the same phenomenon today Whereas a few years ago, people invested in companies that were developing artificial intelligence. Now AI is a standard tool that companies in all sectors need to be competitive. Across both of our portfolios, we are investing in applied AI in multiple conventional sectors, including some listed here, aerospace, retail, FinTech, security, healthcare, agriculture, and more. How has this played out in fund one? Turning to the next slide, we've had three distributions so far from Fund One. The first came in 2019 when another fund purchased 10% of Fund One at a markup, and we distributed that to those of you who are investors uh, in LPs in Fund One. The second came in March of this year when Thomson Reuters purchased Pondera Solutions and, um, and provided a distribution to you in the midst, at the peak of the COVID uh, crisis. And then a third smaller distribution uh, is occurring this quarter with the purchase of Revionics by Aptos. Um, these three distributions represent a return to investors so far of 9.7% of the fund. If you go to the next slide, I just wanna highlight some key metrics from our fund one. We have deployed $12.5 million into 16 core companies. 
Those investments are now valued at $21 million, a multiple of 1.7 times, and revenue in the, that set of companies is approximately $88 million. These companies have raised an aggregate $241 million from all sources, not just Impact VC, and have achieved a total enterprise valuation of roughly $778 million. Impact has played an important role working with its portfolio companies to recruit later stage VCs writing larger checks and also to recruit corporates that write larger checks. And we have co-invested in this portfolio with several of the um, uh, corporate venture arms that I mentioned just a couple of slides ago. With that, let me turn to our fund two. Impact launched our fund two at the end of 2019 and the early fund two portfolio is well positioned for the post COVID environment. In fact, our first investment is a digital medicine startup on the front lines with the Gates Foundation, National Institute of Health and the FDA. We've seen corporate venture arms continue to increase their activity and focus on applied AI. In this slide, we really try to summarize our overall approach, which is a calibrated version of the same approach that we deployed for fund one. We see this as an opportune time to deploy capital into early stage startups. We see partnerships with family offices and corporates as a higher expected return way to go about that investment. We launched our fund two at the end of last year. We are gonna hold a second closing this quarter we are looking for major partners among family offices and institutions to round out our LP base, and we'd welcome the chance to tell those of you who are not already participants more about it. If you going to the next, we are continuing to get a better quality and quantity of deal flow from our close collaboration with corporate venture arms. And here we note that the uh, revenue from AI to uh, larger corporates has increased dramatically uh, and is expected to continue to do so. And the number of acquisitions that these corporates are making in the AI space has also increased dramatically. Um, and we think that our portfolio can represent uh, fertile hunting grounds for these corporates. Um, going to the next slide, we are using the same plan uh, for fund two that we utilized for fund one, seed stage investments in applied AI, co-investing with corporate VCs, with um, formal and informal frequent updates with each portfolio company. And we really act to serve as a common resource for our fund companies. Uh, for example, when we took the time to really learn the PPP loan process earlier this year, and we reached out to each of our companies to assist them in navigating it and to help them get up that curve more quickly. Here you see the four investments we've already made in fund two and the two investments that we will be making in the next couple of weeks to form the first six companies that will be part of our fund two portfolio. Um, and we believe that we're, we're off to a very strong start. This is the portfolio that the current quarter close will deploy in with this head start. If you look at the next slide, it just illustrates how we continue to seek out the best deals for the remainder of fund two. We're holding three plus all hands meetings per week Internally, we do digital due diligence during COVID through Zoom, uh, working through new investments. We have a very high volume of incoming deal flow uh, that, that uh, hit our radar from a variety of sources, including you, who we have deputized to help make us aware of good investment opportunities. We are holding summits and webinars with angel investors, family offices, wealth fan managers, and corporate venture capitalists to um, co-invest and identify deal flow. And we're holding um, uh, regular Zoom calls uh, with all of those groups and particularly the corporates. If we go to um, the last slide in, in my uh, keynote, it's a summary of where we stand in fund two. Early in the life of fund two, um, we did lower our investment minimum and allowed investors below even $1 million to allow smaller investors from our fund one to have the option of renewing in fund two. For the close this quarter, we're going to take that, we're, we're after the close this quarter, we're going to take that minimum back up and we, we will be pursuing larger commitments next year. So if you've been in a state where you've been tracking and evaluating fund two, looking at fund one and really sort of, you know, uh, just, you know, the sort of pass and track type mentality, and you're planning to invest less than $5 million, particularly for those of you who'd been evaluating investments of $1 million, 
this quarter is the time to make a decision. We will still uh, gratefully accept uh, those smaller size investments this quarter, and next year we will move uh, to targeting larger size investments. And we encourage you to review the data. Um, you will receive the Q3 quarterly report within the next week, and that will be the last significant distribution uh, before uh, the deadline for the second closing of um, Fund 2 uh, later this quarter. With that, I want to pass it back to Jack to continue our program.